Our third presentation, our third team presentation, is in the area of biochemistry. Andrew Jin and Stephen Wang come from California. They're both students at the Harker School in San Jose. Uh, their mentor is Dr. Dobrin Draganov, a postdoctoral research fellow at the City of Hope, a cancer research hospital in Southern California. Stephen and Andrew. Good morning, everybody. My name is Andrew Jin. And my name is Stephen Wang. We are presenting our project, Rational Discovery and Optimization of Synergistic Chemotherapy Combinations, a novel framework integrating gene perturbation analysis and machine learning algorithms. It takes, on average, 13 years of research and an investment of $1.8 billion to bring a single chemotherapy agent to clinical use, which hinders our ability to address patient needs. Even then, the effects of such single targeted agents is largely limited because cancer cells can quickly develop resistance. In fact, we find that resistance arises due to mutations in tumor heterogeneity, compensatory signaling pathways, and the expression of resistance-associated mechanisms such as drug efflux pumps. In light of these limitations, combination therapy has emerged as a promising avenue for cancer treatment. Now, recently, Bozik et al. found that while sequential therapy fails nearly 100% of the time, simultaneous dual therapy is effective at treating a wide range of cancer cases, as long as the correct drugs are chosen. Furthermore, we observe that combination therapy addresses the three limitations of sequential therapy. For example, it is improbable that a single mutation will confer resistance to both drugs. Also, administration of multiple drugs can target compensatory pathways and finally, the expression of resistance-associated mechanisms such as drug efflux pumps is unlikely to impact both drugs at the same time. However, if we want to truly advance this field, we also have to consider its two major obstacles. First, concerns over toxicity accumulation, and second, a large combinatorial search space. For example, from a pool of just 10 drugs, a total number of 1,013 combinations is possible. Thus, our objectives were twofold. To address the toxicity accumulation problem, we focused our research on the discovery of synergistic drug pairs. When two agents synergize, they enhance the potencies of one another, leading to a combined outcome that is greater than the sum of individual outcomes. This allows for enhanced potency of reduced toxicity and avoidance of drug resistance. Now, on the other hand, because of the large combinatorial search space, current trial and error methods are incredibly ineffective and expensive. Thus, we aimed at integrating bioinformatics and computational predictions with in vitro experimentation to speed up the drug discovery process. So in our study, we considered two types of synergy mechanisms and labeled them as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 synergy occurs when two agents synergize by reversing resistance and inducing sensitivity to treatment. In order to find these kinds of synergistic drug pairs, we developed a novel computational screening method based on gene expression perturbations. Now, on the other hand, type 2 synergistic interactions occur through targeting of complementary pathways. In order to predict type 2 drug pairs, we developed a machine learning approach using artificial neural networks. Through the use of both of these methods, we successfully identified five synergistic drug pairs, three of which are novel. So for the type 1 drug pairs, we analyzed the Cancer Genome Project and the Connectivity Map databases to predict synergy conducted gene-centered enrichment analysis to elucidate synergy mechanisms, and validated our identified drug pairs with in vitro experiments. We will now go over the methodology and results of each part in detail. So for the first part of the type 1 synergy prediction method, we analyzed the Cancer Genome Project, or the CGP database, which catalogs the gene expression profiles of 714 cancer cell lines after treatment with 138 drugs. Now specifically, we looked at eight common chemotherapy agents, and for each one, we separated the cell lines into two groups, cell lines resistant to the drug and cell lines sensitive to the drug. Then, we used the significant analysis of microarrays method to identify genes differentially expressed between the two groups of cell lines, identifying a resistance gene, a resistance signature of 100 genes, and a sensitivity signature of 100 genes for each chemotherapy agent. So here's a heat map displaying doxorubicin's resistance and sensitivity associated gene signatures. As we expect, the sensitivity genes are highly expressed in the sensitive cell lines, but show low expression in the resistance cell lines. 
Therefore, the expression of these genes most likely causes the tumor to, to, to become sensitive to doxorubicin treatment. And we see the opposite pattern in expression levels of the resistance genes. So now let's take a closer look at some of the individual genes in doxorubicin's gene signatures. So resistance gene ABCB1, which codes the p-glycoprotein drug efflux pump, was expressed 2.16 times higher in the resistant lines than in the sensitive cell lines. Sensitivity gene FAS, a cell death receptor that causes apoptosis, was expressed 2.14 times higher in the sensitive cell lines. Now to identify drug pairs likely to exhibit type 1 synergy, we wanted to find secondary drugs that would knock down each chemotherapy agent's resistance signature and increase expression of its sensitivity signature. And the connectivity map was perfect for this purpose since it contains the gene expression perturbation profiles of 1,309 drugs of small molecules. So by computationally screening this rich database for drugs that achieve our desired perturbation effects, we're able to rank the top few secondary drugs predicted to synergize with each primary chemotherapy agent. And we decided to test these four synergistic drug pairs that we predicted in vitro. To gain a better understanding of the biological networks underlying the potential synergy in our predicted type 1 drug pairs, we then conducted gene set enrichment analysis on the resistance and sensitivity signature of the chemotherapy agents. So shown here is doxorubicin's resistance and sensitivity signatures. And in the sensitivity signature, we saw that the gene set of apoptosis was the most highly enriched. Because doxorubicin acts through DNA damage, it makes sense that the upregulation of apoptosis-inducing genes, such as FAST, TP53, and CASP3, would sensitize cells to treatment. Furthermore, in the resistance signature of doxorubicin, we found that the plasma membrane and drug metabolism gene set showed high enrichment. Now, this may explain the potential synergy between doxorubicin and naringenin, as naringenin has been shown to have an inhibitory effect on the peak glycoprotein and a variety of other multi-drug resistant proteins. So after identifying our predicted type 1 drug pairs, we then wanted to experimentally validate them through biological assays. So we ran a series of LDH cell viability assays through serial dilutions of drugs both alone and in combination on MCF7 human and mouse 421.2 breast cancer cell lines. Now in order to actually determine synergy, we used the combination index or CI method, which quantifies the magnitude of synergy with a single number. So a CI value less than one indicates synergy, equal to one an additive effect, and greater than one antagonism. So from that, we can see that through the table that all four of our drug combinations exhibited synergy in at least one breast cancer cell line. And specifically in the MCF7 cells, we saw that the combination of doxorubicin and naringenin showed the, yielded the greatest synergistic effect for a CI value of 0 0.1, or 0 0.25. In the 421.2 cells, we saw that the combination of doxorubicin and adifinine yielded the greatest synergy for a CI value of 0 0.12. For the combinations that exhibited significant synergy for a CI value of less than 0 0.7, we observed especially high anti-tumor effects. So for example, because adifinine on its own was not effective at killing the cancer cells, but when administered simultaneously with doxorubicin, it almost doubled the inhibitory effect of doxorubicin on its own from 40% to 79 percent. Next, we also wanted to investigate the toxicity reduction potential of our synergistic drug pairs. So we conducted isobelogram analysis and derived phase shift dose response curves from this data. So shown here, a upwards boost represents an increase in efficacy, while a shift to the left represents a decrease in toxicity. And as shown, the combination of doxorubicin and adifinine in the 421.2 cells yielded the greatest reduction of toxicity potential as it can reduce the concentration of doxorubicin by over 90%. And we saw similar results in our other predicted drug pairs. These charts show comparisons between our gene expression perturbation method and other synergy discovery methods. The best performing combinations from our study had exhibited greater synergy than, that, than those discovered by both trial and error studies and other computational methods. Finally, in an overall comparison, our method is an improvement over existing computational methods as shown by the average CI value from all considered drug combinations. So now recall that we labeled a drug pair as type 2 if it synergizes by targeting complementary pathway mechanisms. For example, apodin and cytarabine synergize by inducing apoptosis via two major apoptotic cascades, FAST and CAS bases. So to predict these types of combinations, we compiled drug features to train an artificial neural network, which is a machine learning method that mimics the functions of the human brain. 
Predictions were validated through both comparison to data from the Califano lab and our own in vitro experiments. So for each drug combination, we compiled a total of 90 chemical and molecular features from six databases to use as inputs in our neural network. For example, things such as molecular weight of the drug, polar surface area, and solvent accessible surface area. And the output was then the probability that a given drug pair is synergistic. And moreover, the Califano lab rigorously assessed the synergism and antagonism of 91 chemotherapy drug pairs. And we used 61 of these cases to train our neural network and then compared our methods predictions to the remaining 30 cases to assess classification accuracy. So we constructed three different neural network structures, each one varying in the number of hidden nodes. And we saw that the network of 45 hidden nodes performed the best on the validation set, predicting synergism and antagonism with an accuracy of 87%, sensitivity of 100%, and specificity of 85%. And furthermore, we saw that our neural network method was able to make predictions for drugs not included in the Califano data set, and we validated one such predicted drug pair, doxorubicin, with pacotaxel using in vitro experiments. And we saw that the drug pair was indeed extremely synergistic. And on the MCF7 cell line, doxorubicin alone only killed 29% of the cells, and pacotaxel alone only killed 3%. But together, the combination yielded 70% inhibition for a CI value of 0.13. So when evaluating prediction accuracy, we see from these charts that our approach using neural networks is a significant improvement over existing type two prediction methods. So in conclusion, we developed an interdisciplinary framework to efficiently predict synergistic chemotherapy combinations. And we confirmed the effectiveness of our computational methods by discovering five drug pairs, three of which are novel. And furthermore, our neural networks were able to predict type two synergy with an accuracy of 87% which is an improvement over existing type two prediction methods. And finally, our project offers opportunities to reposition drugs from other disease areas into combinations to combat cancer. So in the future, we would like to further develop our type one synergies that we discovered for clinical use. We'd also like to experimentally validate the numerous other drug pairs that we discovered and predicted. And finally, we would like to expand our neural network predictions to other disease areas. So we'd like to thank our mentors, Dr. Andrew Beck, Dr. Dobrin Dragunov, and Dr. Peter Lee. We'd also like to thank the Siemens Foundation, the College Board, and George Washington University for giving us this opportunity to present our project. We'd also like to thank the teachers from our school and Ingenuity Systems for providing feedback on our presentation and paper. And finally, we'd like to thank the judges and audience for their time. And here are the selected references we used. <laughs>